Do you know what a tracker is? Many of you do because some cybersecurity people push this as being important. A tracker is a cross-site cookie used by ad companies, especially Google. These trackers can see what you're doing on each website or app and thus powers the targeted advertising you see all the time. If you just search for cars, you'll see car ads in other websites. If you search for shoes, then be prepared to see shoe ads. Some privacy apps report them to you and it causes some panic. And some attempt to limit these trackers with ad blockers and various other tools. Unfortunately, it will also lead to a lot of frustration because just about everything has a tracker. Do you need to panic? In this video, we're going to study this threat carefully and then you'll find out what you need to do. Is there a real danger? Yes, there is, but it's not what you think. You'll find out that I have a completely different approach than any other privacy or cybersecurity channel. And even this has evolved because of changing threats in 2022. And the approach comes from a reasoned analysis of the threats and not just blindly smashing trackers everywhere you find them. Stay tuned for some real education. I'm on the platform odyssey.com and I'm now one of the top creators on there. In case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. My company provides privacy solutions like Bytes VPN, Brax Mail, and now our newest product is the Brax2 Privacy Phone, which protects your data on mobile. Brax2 is now available on Amazon and is also on my app, Brax Me. The links are in the description. The first thing we need to understand is what a tracker really is and why it exists. When an app or website displays content, there may be an area dedicated to advertising. Usually it's a fixed size block inside the website. What you may not realize is that if the website is say eScooters.com and if there's an ad area on there, then that will typically be googleads.com or some similar entity. So when you visit one website, that website will embed scripts from Google Ads so a site like eScooters.com becomes that plus googleads.com. Let's say you go to another site like FancyCars.com. Again, that site will have FancyCars.com as well as GoogleAds.com. The reason this works like this is because each website property owner wants to make money from clicks. Google pays for clicks on AdSense. And so to enable this feature, Google requires that the website sign up with AdSense and then embed their JavaScript on the website. The JavaScript is provided by Google, of course. So basically every website now has a built-in spyware because website owners deliberately insert this code in as well as code for Google Analytics. The way the internet works, if you don't put Google Analytics in, you might as well hide from search engines and no one wants that. After all, the purpose of a website is to have it seen. This explains how ads are powered on the internet. Now let's go further. To prevent nefarious use of a website, an extra rule is in place that affects ad programming. If a website stores information in a cookie, which is a stored value on your browser, no other domain can read it. So eScooters.com can only read cookies from eScooters.com. FancyCars.com can only read cookies from FancyCars.com. Presumably, this would keep you safe from sites tracking you on the internet. But here's the kicker. GoogleAds.com can read cookies from GoogleAds.com. And since it is embedded in most websites, then GoogleAds.com can cheat this rule and track what you do on any website with an ad frame. So think about it. GoogleAds.com can see everything you do on any site that has ads. They then are able to collect information about you and store an identifier on your browser to match to that information. That identifier is called a tracker. That is the anatomy of a tracker. Now it's more complex than this because the ad frame area is not populated by googleads.com. Also, I say googleads.com, but Google actually has many more domains because it bought many other ad companies. So think of my use of googleads.com as just a generic Google domain. The space created by the Google Ads code is auctioned in real time. And the winner of the auction gets to occupy the space 
in that website's ad frame, which also means that there are other domains involved. Think of Google as the wholesaler, then a retailer rents the space from Google for that one moment. While this retailer rents that space, it can also have its own domain cookies to track you beyond what is done by googleads.com. So it has gotten quite complex, and this is why ad blockers have to block so many more domains since they have to deal with all the Google domains and all the ad retailers. And you cannot block domains like youtube.com or google.com since that affects the functionality of those sites in normal use. So this is why you can't block all ads regardless of what you do. Let's get back to the cookies. If you're on fancycars.com, the ad retailer on an ad space there is tracking that you are on fancycars.com. It does this by leaving an identifier on the cookie that is unique to you. Then whatever data it collects on the ad window is stored by the ad company. If you are now on yahoo.com, the same ad retailer can read the cookie identifier and cross-check its database and find that you've been to fancycars.com so they can present car ads to you elsewhere. Now, this is the rudimentary explanation of what happens with ad trackers. Some of you will ask the question, so what if ad companies are tracking you? And as I will explain later, I actually agree with that somewhat. It is not the ads that worry me. The problem is that to push these ads, your activity on the internet, which includes your locations, your IP addresses, your clicks, your preferences, your website visits, your purchases are recorded in various databases. This information can then be used to learn about you. This information is also sold, so if improperly disseminated, it can be quite dangerous because this is what is used to profile us. Politically, racially, financially, and so on. For example, this is how our locations are sold. However, as I will point out later, these trackers themselves are incapable of doing this profiling. So this itself is not a source of panic. There are apps focused on showing you the trackers. One well-known one is the Exodus app. This app wants to truly incite panic in a big way. Aside from showing you which websites have trackers, which is practically all, then this app will also claim that the app uses Google services, implying some extreme danger from apps. Even though the only service used by the app is notifications, and the app can run on a de-Google phone with Micro-G. I personally think this app is misleading, as well as completely misguided. Since the only thing it will reveal to you is that you cannot escape trackers. It cannot offer a solution. Personally, I would never recommend to use this app unless you are in a particular narrow subset of users that are willing to limit your phone use. And the main problem with this app is that trackers are no longer the complete story. So the warning it provides is flawed. Let's begin expanding your understanding here of the tracking problem. There are two additional layers of tracking going on, and that has nothing to do with cookies. Yes, you are being tracked without the need for cookies. And this has become so effective that an ad company could skip cookies and they will not miss a beat. First, the approach to tracking without cookies is using the technique called browser fingerprinting. The idea of the cookie tracker is to put out an identifier on your browser so that the ad company can check their databases to see what you have done recently. But the identifier need not be stored on the browser. Browser fingerprinting is based on the approach that there are unique characteristics of your browser that can make your device unique. For example, the type of device you're on, the screen resolution, the color choices, the window size, the time zone, IP address, the browser extensions, there is enough of this that there's a high probability of matching you based on browser characteristics alone. If you want to find out how browser fingerprinting is implemented, you can check out the example on brax.me slash geo. I have a test code in there and that's old code now, so newer techniques may be added to that. So a cookie is not even necessary anymore to maintain the identity of the user. This is even more important because nowadays, a lot of people put ad blockers and delete cookies. So the technique of relying on a cookie is no longer foolproof. Google is attempting to block browser fingerprinting, by the way. 
But after announcing this plan two years ago, I don't think this is progressing yet. Nothing so far has changed. Browser fingerprinting can still be done. The point is that tracking can continue without having to store a value in a cookie. So even blocking cookies does not protect you from an ad company. What has changed recently is the second aspect of tracking that has rendered cookies obsolete. This is the new technique called cross-device tracking. Cross-device tracking is heavily tied to your phone, an iPhone or a Google Android. It is also tied to Google requiring two-factor authentication via Google app and not just using a phone number for texting. The point of this move by Google is to match all your devices together so whatever you do on all devices is seen together by Google. Many of us deal with multiple devices every day. Computer for work, tablet for reading, phone for mobile use. And Google wants to make sure these are all tied together as a set. When you use any Google platform like YouTube, for example, you have to log in. So Google already knows who you are on each platform. The Google ID is an absolute identifier and it works on all devices since you log in with the same Google ID on all devices. I refer to this in other videos as deterministic tracking. Now to confirm your identity, there is a Google app on the phone that can actually read the unique serial number off the phone. The Google app can read both the IMEI off the phone or alternatively, it can read a unique value for your device called the advertising ID. This can be done on both iPhones and Google Androids. On a Google Android, you cannot function without logging in using your Google ID. On iOS, you have to authenticate 2FA using the Google app and this is being required now for many Google users. It is absolutely required of YouTube creators. The point is with a Google ID, any advertising is pretty much exact and cross-platform. And guess what? It is done without a need for cookies whatsoever. This is part of the abuse in the use of 2FA. Basically, it is a cross-device tracking tool. Some idiot posted on my 2FA video that my objection to 2FA is stupid since he's a cybersecurity professional. Well, this is an example of a cybersecurity professional that really has no understanding of the world that he's supposed to understand. 2FA by itself has a good purpose. 2FA as used by big tech, specifically Google, Apple, Facebook, is a means to do cross-device tracking. If they can tie each device to a fixed identity, then anything you do on any device can be cross-referenced. So if you search for motorcycles on your phone, motorcycle ads will pop out on the browser on your computer. And all this without ever needing a cookie. Thus, to be honest with you, this obsession with cookie trackers becomes an absolute waste of time if you didn't think all this through. If you're using an iPhone or Google Android, then there is no point worrying about trackers. It is plain and clear that you are being tracked through your phone, the same phone that is 2FA for Google. So for the average person using a regular phone, worrying about cookies is absolutely the wrong thing to do since nothing will happen to help you. There are other moves to be made and that is to pick a phone that doesn't track you via this cross device method. And it also means instituting other procedures to prevent browser fingerprinting from harming you. To lay out the big picture of what I'm saying here, the fact is that we're pretty zucked if we're going to use traditional devices and persist with normie behavior. The whole tracking industry has now centralized on the phone and without changing your approach to the mobile phone, then tracking will be absolutely accurate. And there's nothing you can do about it. In the past, the cookie trackers were able to keep some short-term memory of your activity as long as you didn't clear cookies. But what was missing from cookies was that the identifier in the tracking cookie was just a rough identity and short term. Nowadays, the ads point to an exact identity. Google Analytics can point out your interest to the ad company with your Google ID as the index. And there are other identifiers used to confirm who you are, the advertising ID, the IMEI, and so on. And because these identifiers stick with you for the long term, you are profiled to gazoo. Google can pinpoint exactly what you believe 
what you like, what you spend money on, what your politics are. And this is tied directly as well to your search results, which are modified based on what Google knows about you. So how do you beat this? Well, I tell you what, I have never concerned myself about cookies and cookie trackers. I've implemented a couple of techniques to make sure my Google ID sees very little of what I do on the internet. First thing I've done is to abandon the normie phone, the iPhone or the Google Android. My daily driver is a de-Google phone. Mine is a Brax2 phone running Brax OS. My phone has no Google login. In fact, the phone has no login whatsoever. Google apps of any sort cannot be installed on the phone. All applications on it are based on open source, so there's no hiding nefarious activities. There are other kinds of the Google phones. I sell Brax too, but I also sell Google Pixels running Lineage OS. From other sources, any Android open source project OS will work, like Calyx OS or Graphene OS or eFoundation and others, and also Linux phones. All of these will do the job. No Google ID, no Google app on the phone, nothing can read the IMEI on the phone. So that shuts down the main source of identity for Google ads. Of course, I'm a YouTuber, so I have to have a Google account. But Google cannot detect any activity of mine on mobile since I don't have a device that can provide any cross-device tracking data. I am required to have a Google Android as a YouTuber, and I do have one, but it is turned off and I don't use it except for emergency 2FA use. So that's step one. Deny them access to a mobile device that can be used for cross-tracking. Second approach that I use is to always run my Google activities in a separate browser, and I can keep that logged into Google. All my YouTube actions are on this one browser, and I happen to use Chrome. What can Google discover about me? This one browser is in fact being tracked by Google since it has my Google ID on it. I know that. But for that reason, I hardly do anything on Chrome other than to watch YouTube and handle my channel and do things on Google. I realize that Google can see the YouTube videos I watch, so I'm cognizant of that. Then I use separate browsers for everything else. My second browser happens to be Chromium. And there I go to Amazon, Netflix, eBay, etc. I do not go to anything Google. And this is an important rule. I never, never, never log into Google on this browser. What happens then? So all the typical websites I visit on Chromium will obviously have trackers. And yes, they will leave cookies. And yes, if I happen to look at boats on yachtworld.com, sure enough, I will see boat ads on other websites I visit, like news sites. But I don't care. I don't care because these websites, even with their trackers, do not know who I am. In fact, the ads are typically short term since they only have a temporary identity. This, folks, is how you blunt the advertising. You can allow advertising minus the evil. I don't want some platform like Google tracking what I do so it can profile my beliefs and ideas. It can't do that since most of what I do on the internet cannot be connected to a Google ID. Occasionally, I want to search YouTube for videos and I don't want it to be associated with my Google ID. So I have a third browser dedicated to that. In this case, it is a Brave browser. Brave browser automatically dumps tracking cookies as well, so it ensures that any tracking is absolutely short term. And of course, I would never, never, never log into Google on Brave. I hope you're getting the sense of a solution. Make sure your Google ID is isolated. Practically all internet advertising is controlled by Facebook and Google. Notice I didn't mention Zuckbook at all. It has the same exact problem as a Google ID, except it is the Facebook user ID, which is your email. I don't believe there's anything positive you can do for privacy if you have a Zuckbook account, so I'm not even suggesting any way out. Just dump Zuck and Zucking Meta. The reality is that just like Google ads persist on so many websites, Facebook has a similar presence with the Facebook like button, which is basically an embedded Facebook.com with its spyware in many many sites and that's what's doing the tracking so if you really persist in staying on facebook and don't want to lose your privacy entirely then facebook has to be treated like google and be given its own private browser in fact it may be possible to combine google and facebook on chrome in my setup the effect is once again the same anytime a facebook tracker 
is encountered on Chromium, it will not get access to a Facebook ID, so the data has to be thrown away. This procedure of using multiple browsers to corral the bad players is what I call browser isolation, and it's a strategy that is completely my own making. I've been publicly teaching people this method for at least eight years. Now, what about ad blockers? Even my VPN service, Bytes VPN, has an automatic ad blocker based on Pi-hole. The way ad blockers work, a list of all the domains of all the ad companies are maintained and are basically blocked from reaching the browser. They are blocked by DNS blocking. Do they work? Well, aside from having the ads displayed, which is an irritation, they really can't hurt too much as long as you follow the procedures I already mentioned. The Google phone with no Google ID and browser isolation. But it doesn't hurt and does serve to limit the information collected. The big picture here is not that there are trackers. In fact, we have to face the fact that there can be no internet experience without trackers. The bigger problem is trackers with a permanent identity like a Google ID and a Facebook ID. Temporary identities in cookie trackers are a more limited threat. I'm not sure an app like Exodus is understood. Exodus is meant for the hardcore users using very locked down phones like those using Graphene OS. Limited apps limited functionality. You can do that, but I don't believe all this is necessary. All you need to do is deny giving the ad platforms a permanent identity, and they really can't do much to you. If a phone has no identity to begin with, at least no permanent identity, then apps really can't misuse your data. So nip the problem in the bud, focus on stopping the identity tracking, and the rest will solve itself. Thank you for watching and I hope you subscribe so you can see more of this content.